I'm at a new place now, a new temple. I'm staying in uh, North Thailand uh, in the mountains here. Uh, just a, a retreat, a retreat temple. That's why I've slowed down the videos a little bit. Firstly, thank you. We've reached 200 on YouTube. Um, 200 subscribers on YouTube and thank you very much for that. And um, I also have a BitChute channel and I hope you give some love to that too. There's only 65 subscribers on that channel. Hope that one grows as well. Uh, I divert the videos from YouTube to BitChute all the time because you never know with uh, YouTube uh, with their guidelines and censoring. You just don't know uh, if, if, if you're going to the com sometimes they show the comments, sometimes they don't. YouTube has a weird policy. Um, although I appreciate the platform and I appreciate posting videos on YouTube, uh, we've tried to create our own platform called, called Buddhist.cafe. If you haven't subscribed there yet or checked it out, please do. I built the site with uh, two other people, with two friends, and we're trying to build a network up there uh, <clears throat> of, for Buddhists uh, to meet together and uh, create projects and do good things. I hope you join that. You consider that as well. It's called Buddhist.cafe. That's the website. So once again, thank you very much for, for helping the channel reach more than 200 subscribers. Hopefully we can get a few thousand subscribers because that'll motivate me to keep going with these videos. Motivation is more important than anything else uh, because uh, like I've said many, many times, I, I, um, I only do these videos if people really want to hear what I've got to say. Otherwise, I'm not really uh, motivated by any other uh, means, actually, because it's not a money-making um, project. It's not to try to get, uh, uh, how could you say, like uh, <clears throat> sponsorship and things like this. But it does help in terms of support, and it um, we've got some projects that I've got going with some with some friends of mine, with some followers of mine, and the more people that would are interested, the better it is, and more successful we can be with our projects. So please consider, if you haven't yet uh, joined Buddhist Cafe, please consider joining that website, and if you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe now. In terms of likes and dislikes, I don't care if it's liked or disliked as long as that grows because that helps. That gives me signals, like I've said before. It gives me the signal that the information I'm giving is, uh, is, is wanting to be heard or not wanting to be heard, actually. That's what the dislikes do. It tells me, no, we don't want to, <laughs> we don't like it. So I, it doesn't matter to me. Bad comments, good comments, dislikes, likes. It's all okay. It's all good feedback for me. It helps me to grow. It helps me to uh, steer the conversation in the right direction. Today I wanted to talk about something interesting. Uh, doubts. Doubts. Uh, where we do things, uh, we might follow through with things um, when there's, <clears throat> and, and we have doubts when we make decisions. Obviously, whenever we make any kind of decision, whether it's a small decision a large decision uh, or a decision that pertains to uh, the future. In other words, like uh, borrowing money and, you know, <clears throat> like for example, a home loan is a sometimes they're 30 years, they could be five years. So you're projecting into the future. So this is where doubt comes in with a lot of things. And doubt is also uh, one of the obstacles uh, in Buddhism, one of the obstacles mentally that we need to deal with. So what's really interesting for one of the rules as a monk uh, that the Buddha laid down was that uh, when there is doubt, right, if you proceed, uh, that that's, that's an offense. That's, that's a act of wrongdoing because you're not, you're not going ahead without it, without removing the doubt because a doubt means that you're not sure. It means that you're not clear. On the next step on on the decision making process or on the action i guess it's more the action that we're more concerned with the decision but then there's the action so it's either the verbal action the physical action or the mental action in other words even when you're talking if you have doubts about what you're talking 
or the subject matter, you should clear that up first before you talk on that subject. If you don't, what you're doing is perhaps confusing yourself and confusing others at the same time because you're not 100% clear. We're not 100% clear on what we're talking about. That's not good. And it's also good not to talk. Uh, doubts also come from when we're charged with emotions or anger or sadness or grief where we sometimes we do the spontaneous discharge and then later we regret it. And this is where stimulants uh, like alcohol and drugs don't help because when you take away the soberness of the mind, it makes it even harder to be heedful and say the correct, say and do the correct things. And mentally, when the mind is under, um, under, you know, uh, what, what, how do you say, when the mind is uh, dull or under the, um, what's the word again? Un under, under, well, anyway, if it's either drunk or in a drug-induced state, the mind is harder to see clear in what you're doing as opposed to a lot of people who think you're taking drugs and it makes you more clear. It's the opposite. Now I want to talk about the doubt. Doubts come because <clears throat> lack of clarity, lack of information, lack of knowing. And there's this thing where it says follow the heart or follow the intuition. Now that can be dangerous too because mixed with imagination, um, you might end up short as well. So this is why when you have doubts about anything, it's good to really, really ponder, really reflect on the action itself, whether it be you know, verbal, physical, mental, to before you carry it out, is really know that it's the right thing to do or the right thing to say. And even in the mind, the right thing to think about. <clears throat> right? Because this will help you um, cut, cut out a lot of bad, bad action and unwholesome action. It also will help you lead a more sober and clearer life in, in the sense that you're being aware of what you're doing all the time. So the, the rule is if there's doubt, do not proceed. Clear the doubt first. And sometimes that may mean waiting a long time. Some questions may not be answered straight away. Some doubts cannot be cleared straight away. For example, you might be uh, trying to work out a certain problem or, uh, <clears throat> or a certain relationship with someone because getting to know someone takes quite some time, right? So sometimes there's doubts. So sometimes uh, we don't proceed for quite some time on, on any given decision or, or movement until that doubt has been fully cleared, right? Or at least uh, dealt with, at least dealt with. Now back to, the, uh, to the, the, the drugs and alcohol scenario, I want to talk about this in terms of the defilements, right? In terms of the moral, uh, the, uh, the, the moral precepts. <clears throat> Where the Lord Buddha talks about, uh, tells us to refrain from taking uh, alcohol and other drugs or stimulants that make the mind dull, right? In other words, take away your soberness. But it's not just alcohol and drugs. They're the most, they're kind of like the most obvious. They're the most obvious, right? But it's also addiction to, uh, you know, it's also reaction. Now, I talked about uh, this a little bit in the uh, previous video called The Broken Bell, right? But the reaction, emotional reactions, spontaneous combustion reactions, spontaneous combustible reactions, <laughs> if there's such a thing. Uh, but it, in the sense that uh, reacting from a place of, uh, I, I guess, not, not a place of awareness, not a place of sober, sober mind, right? Not a place of uh, peacefulness and quietness and tranquility, more reacting from like a, like a, I guess, the one of the, uh, one of the ten, one of the ten asavas, I suppose. It's there's there's many, but there's ten of them. Uh, one is ignorance. One is pride and conceit. Now, pride and conceit can harm us in a lot of ways because that itself can also create create uh, a lot of confusion and a lot of turmoil in the mind as well. Because pride and conceit can cause a lot of obstacles on our path. One thing that's in, very interesting uh, that one teacher told me one day is that the, yeah, it's the sankara. So even these robes, being a monk, is still fiction. It's still not true. It's it's 
I mean, it's true, but it's ultimately, you know, they're just robes and it's just a life, a life you've entered, you know, a, a decision you've made to follow the Buddha, but it's still a Sankara. You still got to let go of that too. So even whatever you do, uh, the, the whole identity, the whole identity of who we are, like the Buddha talks very clearly about this over and over, this I am, this is myself, this is mine. It's a delusion. And this is deep. This is hard to get through. And then when you even look at the five aggregates, for example, uh, which is the, the, the rupang, which is body, vedana, which is feelings, sanya, perceptions, or memory, sankara, fa fabrications, and vijnana, consciousness itself, like being alive, like being aware, being alive, this whole body, this whole experience, right? It's not self. The five aggregates are not self. And one thing that is very misunderstood, and I say very in terms of uh, it misunderstood is just not enough. It's kind of like that the word misunderstood is strong enough, but we need to add the very here, I think. It's the clinging to these five aggregates, the clinging to the body, clinging to this human phenomena that causes a lot of problems, that causes a lot of turmoil in our mind because the chitta, the mind keeps thinking that this is mine, this is myself. Uh, this is, this is, uh, this is, this is I am. This is who I am, right? And the body. If you look at the body and what happens to the five aggregates, well, it perishes, right? It perishes. It has a, it's impermanent, right? So these are things um, as Buddhists we need to reflect on uh, daily, all the time. Is this constant clinging and craving to the five aggregates, and in other words, the world. And the whole idea is to go beyond this and realize what our true nature is, what the truth is, what the truth is, right? What our what our what our real nature is, <clears throat> which is beyond just physical form, right? Beyond consciousness. Now that's a big one. Now consciousness is is kicked down or kicked out or uh, kicked around a lot, um, but in Buddhism, to be clear, consciousness is just part of the body. It's part of being awake. It's not. When we talk about the energy or the chi or the all these other things, we're talking about chitta. We're talking about the chitta, the one who knows, having its own. It's it, it's it, I guess it's it's beyond description. But the thing is, it's beyond the five aggregates, right? It's the one that travels through 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 body to body, through form to form, kind of thing. And it's a mysterious thing. The Buddha says, "I don't call it a soul. I don't call it a spirit." I don't really give it, you know, doesn't give it much. It's a matter of give it much definition. It's a, it's a, it's a thing of realizing it oneself, what our true nature is. But well, one thing's for sure, what we do know, what we can see with our eyes and what we can experience is death, right? And you see someone else die, someone else's body, um, you know, get in, in getting cremated or getting buried, that thing that thing doesn't last. It goes back to this this body, right? This goes back to the elements at some point. So this is something we have to consider all the time. So if if you don't know where to start, it's the it's the clinging to the five to the five aggregates that needs to be understood all the time. Now, of course, it's not just that. And I've had met, I've already made a lot of videos already, so I don't just talk about this. I'm not saying this is the only thing, but this is the subject of today and. Now, how does this uh, tie in with doubt? Well, see, doubt comes from not knowing, not knowing all the, I guess, all the, all the angles in terms of decision making, or in views, the views, your view in life, right? Not understanding what life is all about, kind of thing, or what death is all about, or what the body is all about. Why were we reborn? Doubts come up when we don't know these things. In other words, I always say to people. I've said this quite a few times, but I, I think it's apt to repeat it here. If you make a reflection, you sit down with yourself every day and you think and you reflect and you reflect on the fact that, okay, ask yourself this, right? If in the next 10 minutes I was to pass away, where would the mind's destination be? And this is important because there you'll start to see doubts. There you start to see a not knowing, unless you know. But where would it go? Now, in terms of the uh, the Abrahamic religions, um, in terms of Christianity, 
uh, Islam and Judaism. I guess there's, there's going back to God or going to heaven or going to hell, right? But when you see, so you could you can still use that in this in this reflection. So if you were to die, where would you go if that's your belief system or your view system? But in Buddhism, it's different. In Buddhism, it's different. It's not so much different in terms of the heaven and hell, right? But there's also the possibility of going beyond this to a thing called Nibbana, right? Unbinding, where the chitta is released, <clears throat> right? So when the chitta is released from the five aggregates, when, when truth and pure wisdom, pure wisdom is born, where the chitta, in, uh, I guess, becomes, is, becomes pure wisdom, I think, I think I'm getting close to it, but it's not, still not, 100% on yet <clears throat> but anyway as the Buddha says when you see the Dharma you see me when you see me you see the Dharma so the Chitta is in line with Dharma I guess the only way to take to say it is true nature right so when when you when 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 you understand and you realize what true nature is or in terms of the third noble truth cessation of cessation of Dukkha when you realize cessation of Dukkha right Dukkha Nirodo Ariyasa Chang right this is very important. So <clears throat> in terms of the ultimate Dharma and then coming to the worldly Dharma, doubt, doubt in this sense is a big deal because it's about knowing what I guess the fundamental is starting off with the right views of really understanding what human nature is, what the human condition is, understanding Dukkha, understanding Anicca Dukkha Anatta, understanding that it, there's impermanence understanding that that there is a thing called stress and suffering understanding that there is not self understanding that uh, uh, there is the five aggregates right so when we make decisions right if the fundamental base is not clear then the decisions thereafter can cause a lot of turmoil and problems uh, ongoing this is something i wish i knew a long time ago or i at least i wish i could have reflected a long time ago it would have saved me a lot of a lot of problems Right, but nonetheless, uh, better late than never, I suppose. But this is why I also do these videos. So I hope some young people can see and listen to these things and reflect on it, uh, reflect on it, and ponder on it yourself. And I hope it helps you, especially when you're young and uh, you know doubts. There are a lot of doubts, but there's always doubts. Doubt is a problem that is not taught in school much. It's not taught um, in the society much. But doubt is a is a huge problem as well as what I talked about you know in a previous video about uh, the problem with uh, resentment and revenge and, and and these are real things that real life situations that we need to be prepared to deal with and learn to deal and learn to handle them and and be best prepared of how to conduct ourselves and this is where moral etiquette comes in now these days um, like I guess in in I guess throughout time the, the the sensual attachment or the the, the passion the, the the craving for passion or craving for sensual desire right or or pleasant desires you see even food can become a drug sugar can become a drug but, but even the the worst one is the bad mental patterns the negative mental patterns right this comes from a state of not knowing right which we, we call avidya not seeing not knowing true nature avidya in terms of Pali, right? So doubt is a state of avidya in a lot of ways. <clears throat> you can you can really you can really talk you can really attribute doubt to avidya in a lot of ways. Not that it's total avidya, but it does come under the umbrella because doubt is a is an area of not seeing. And when you put it where doubt is really dangerous, if you proceed anyway, is in is making future engagement. For example, like uh, a contract or that goes into the future, anything that goes into the future where you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, that is, that, that is already a doubt. So that's why, uh, I, you know, a lot of contracts and things like this are kind of against this, this kind of rule or this kind of, uh, I guess, this kind of way of seeing things because how do you know what's going to happen tomorrow? Like if you sign... For example, on a home loan for 30 years, how do you know what's going to happen tomorrow? You don't know. There's doubt. So I would encourage you not to sign that. Anything that goes into the future or it's, or um, something that 
perhaps is better is a very short period of time, like a day or two, because you cause less damage to yourself and less stress to yourself. But it's interesting anyway, because it's an interesting thing to ponder. Like that, it's something new that I've kind of uh, hit upon lately about doubt and long contracts, right? Because even uh, as a monk, if we want to start a temple, uh, there is there are things that you have to sign. You have to get into contracts with certain things, um, and so it's very interesting you know, when I'm when 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 I have to enter any agreement now, like the clearing the doubt. And I guess you can clear it through clauses and careful reading through the legal stuff, and having a good lawyer or knowing the language yourself and making sure everything's adjusted until you do not have any doubt, until you think you're secure with that decision. But this is very important, particularly. Uh, even in relationships, you know, romantic relationships or any other relationships, it's not enough to just be intuitive uh, as as I've found out in the past. It's always good to clear out any doubts you have with anyone in any relationships. Now, as a monk, I don't give marriage counselling. I don't give uh, relationship counselling. I don't do talk about any of that. Um, but all I can do is talk about <clears throat> dharma, and how to use Dharma to make your relationship better with others. That we can talk about. Now, what's really not good is engaging in any romantic relationship when you have doubts in yourself. This will cause a lot of problems for yourself. You know, the doubt, coming back to doubts, right? When when you're dealing with decisions with other people, if there's doubts and you proceed, you're going to cause yourself a lot of problems because you have what you haven't done is the due diligence to remove, to, to create clarity for you before you proceed. So you might say to someone, um, you know, something small, for example, yeah, I'll be there on Thursday, but in your mind, you're not sure, you see, and then you don't show up, uh, just that person may get upset and you haven't followed through on your word. Now, following through on your word is golden. It's, it's, it's a very important thing in Buddhism and, and not just in Buddhism, in a, in a lot of cultures, standing by your word, keeping your word. So don't give your word unless you're 100% sure you can do it or carry it out. If you have doubts there, don't don't give your word as well on that one as well. So, you know, I think uh, in terms of the, the, the right view, which is the, the big foundation, right, I think it all stems from there. Once you get the right views on things and really understand impermanence, you're really most likely not to engage in any future future planning uh, because you realize that things can change on a dime things can change that quick and it's not really good to have future plans um, I guess there's I guess you know living in the world you need to have some kind of plan uh, particularly uh, if you're working or trying to get a career in that sense yeah but in in, in terms of realization of of Nirodo there is no future we're not concerned about the future. The, the plan, the, the only plan is, is to realize. So in terms of Buddhism, the goal is to realize. That's the goal. So that's, I guess that's the plan. But if, but if you're a Buddhist lay person and you've got a job, uh, you've got a house, you've got a family, you've got all these other things, having a plan is, is crucial in a lot of ways because there needs to be a strategy of how to, um, you know, deal with all the costs and expenses of living and making income and things like this, there has to be a plan. Uh, although some people disagree with this, you can just go, I guess, ad hoc and just see how it goes. Up to you. I mean, um, whichever whichever one works for you, right? But I, but what all I'm saying is, is that when you have that fundamental view of impermanence and you realize that things can change real quick, and nothing is certain, only death death is certain, and where you're going to go, where the where the mind's destination is, is uncertain. So there's doubt. So as a Buddhist, it's our duty to remove that doubt, to clarify, to, to remove the doubts of where the mind's destination will be. Consider that for a moment, right? Consider this strongly, right? So if when you're reflecting, when you're engaging in the practice of sati and you you ask yourself that question of, if, if I was to pass away in the next 10 minutes, where would the mind's destination be? If you're not sure, if there's uncertainty, if there's doubt, then it's your duty to clarify that, to to destroy the doubt, to know, to know for yourself. I mean, if you don't know for yourself, right? If you don't know for yourself, then really, uh, 
And really, you know, that's that's not a good situation. And, and I think it go, it flies contrary to what the Buddhist practice is all about. Because the Buddhist practice is all about realizing and knowing. Right? That's where we that's what all the factors lead to, realizing and knowing. And that's what we're trying to do every day on a in a daily level, making sure that we've got daily progress and making sure that we're we're going in that direction, I guess not really like walking a path or you know that kind of stuff but we're going in the direction of inward of knowing what our, what our true nature is so i hope you uh this video helps you in understanding and uh reflecting more on doubt and how important it is to clear it out of your life